The Old Testament reading is from Psalm 103, beginning at verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your inequity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with a steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the steadfast love toward those who fear him. So far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. O Lord, have mercy on us. The epistle reading is from James chapter 5, beginning at verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not judge, not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and let your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. A reading from St. Matthew, the eighth chapter. And when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she rose and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's uh, sermon is from Psalm 41, verse 3, and we'll be continuing our sermon series, Be Gracious to Me. As we learned last week when it was Ash Wednesday, we learned that King David wrote many of the Psalms from the first book, and they all point to Jesus in one way. Like a painting, Psalm 41 is an invitation for us to consider and think intently about our Lord and Savior, who, in his poverty, has made us rich in every way, in terms of the resurrection and eternal life. Though the the Psalms are about Jesus and Jesus prayed them, you are brought in too, because you were baptized in his name, his death, and his resurrection. This morning we'll focus on verse 3 of Psalm 41. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. 
Matthias Grunewald was a well-respected German Renaissance artist. He was commissioned to paint an altarpiece in the Isenheim, France. This is the altarpiece that you see before you on our uh, display. It's only one part of it. This is the part that's called the crucifixion. What you'll notice right away about this art piece is how dark the background is. Grunewald does this on purpose to show us about the horrific day that was for Jesus to be crucified on the cross. You see that Jesus is clearly suffering on the cross. His body hangs low and his head too. His arms, his sides, and feet are bleeding. His arms are contorted because of the pain of the nails going through his hands. Jesus' legs are broken. The psalmist tells us, the Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. Jesus is the one whom God sustains on a sickbed. Interestingly, the gospel writers never wrote down anything about Jesus' infirmities. There is no recollection of his medical history, prior family medical history. There's no recollection of him catching a fever or having a headache. As far as we know, Jesus was every doctor's ideal patient. He was always healthy. He never needed maintenance. The gospel writers show us how Jesus is always healing and never the one that needed to be healed. Jesus' body was unblemished leading up to his crucifixion. He was never sick because he never had sin, as the Hebrew author tells us. In a very unique way, Grunewald shows us how Christ has made the cross into his sickbed. What he shows us is our Lord's sickness were not that of his own, but the entire sins of the world, which he assumed upon himself. I'm not sure if you can see this, but if you look very closely into the picture at Jesus' body, you can use both screens to see it too. You'll notice that there's a discolored sickly green on his body. You also notice, if you look carefully, there are small dark spots covering him from head to toe. This was very scandalous to many when this painting first came out, and to a lot of people too who go there and look at it. And that's because it depicts Jesus with a black plague upon him. This painting was painted about a century after the Black Plague wiped out so much of Europe. It recollects a historical point and adds an artistic expression that sin is a plague in itself. A plague that was inflicted upon Jesus' healthy body. St. Paul writes, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus bore the plague of sin and death upon himself so that you and I would live. What's even more interesting about this piece of art is that it was an altarpiece. It was painted for a church in Isenheim. It was painted for a church and not some sort of famous art museum in Paris. You didn't have to stand behind glass to look at it. You didn't have to pay to get in. When you came in to worship that day, it's right in front of you. You can't miss it. This is what you would see every week if you were one of the patients at that hospital. You see Christ bearing your sins upon himself at the cross. The Monastery of St. Anthony was a specialty hospital that treated serious skin diseases. When patients came in for treatment, the brothers would take them to worship too. And they would see this before them, 
their crucified Lord who willingly took all of this upon himself to the point of death. They saw, a, they saw a God who in every way sympathized with them and loved them so much that he would suffer alongside of them. Where you and I would see horror in this painting, the patients saw hope. They saw a God who sustains them on their sickbed and restores them from the bed of illness. And though many of these patients sadly died, they knew that they had a God who attended to them and promised to raise them on the last day from their sick beth, bed of death. You do too. That very God loves you just as much as he loved every one of those patients who sat before this painting. Maybe as you sit here before our Lord and looking at this painting, you have a different kind of illness. You have a bad leg, a bad knee, but you can find comfort that our Lord loves you so much that he hobbled to the cross for you. Maybe your heart doesn't beat as steadily as it once did. You can find comfort that your Savior's heart stopped so that yours can keep going. Maybe the weight of the workplace or things at home are just very heavy upon your shoulders right now. You're anxious and you're depressed. You don't know how you can keep going. You should know that it was our Lord's love for you that kept him on that cross. Your life is precious to him. No sickness or anything like that can ever change it. There's one more interesting detail about this piece of art. It is called the Isenheim altarpiece. And what that means is in isolation, this is what you see, but it's part of a bigger piece of art. In fact, there's four pieces to it. The other parts are closed up like a wing, and they open up on different days of the church year to show you the passion of our Lord and different parts of the biblical narrative. They close it up on Lent to show you um, what you see now for solemnity's sake and for leading up to it. Holy Week, but then on Easter, they open it up and you see the full glory of this painting. You see the Lord's resurrection and ascension into heaven. The wings open up on the altarpiece through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And in that same way, it opens up the gates of heaven to all who believe in him. He will raise them from their sick beds is what this, this entire painting shows us. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and restores them from the bed of illness. Put in a more simpler way, God raised Jesus from the dead on the last day, on the third day, and he restores him to full health. Jesus ridded you of the sickness of sin and the burden of disease. This is how the psalmist, the gospel, the gospel writers, Grunewald, would paint this picture for us. Your God became sick unto death so that you would be raised at the resurrection. So blessed are you who consider the sickness of your Lord, whose sickness has healed you and made you whole in every way. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen.